Come on. All right, there we go. Got some pre-made already. Save me some time. Gonna need a variety of mandrels tonight. And I need a second size ring here. So what I mean by starter pieces is that we're going to be doing little examples like this for each one because it's easier when you need to make new stuff to add on something that's already started. So basically we'll keep this going forever <laughs> and then just keep cutting off the parts we need. So we're going to make a, a series of weaves tonight to get starter pieces of various designs. That is Byzantine. We've already got a table full of foreign one, so we're gonna do some Japanese foreign one next. For that, I need two different sizes of rings. Although they might sound like the same thing, they are completely different. Thank you, Han. Han Joel. Gonna use our curtain rod pins here for rings. In addition to my personal favorite, the nail. Got me some new nails, too. Nice big honking ones work as mandrels. Never, never underestimate the power of a good nail. It's a very cheap option for mandrels. So what you're about to learn is Japanese 4-in-1, and in my opinion, it is probably the easiest chainmail weave anyone can do. We just need a couple of coils to get us going. I'm gonna use two size rings. It really doesn't matter what size rings you're using as long as you got one small and one big. Well, bigger. You don't wanna go too crazy, but you could. Whew. Let's see, we're gonna do box chain. And a few others. We're filling up faster than I thought. It's good. Hello, Kylie. And Millie, apparently. This is just a hobby. All right, two coils. Rings are completely different sizes, so it shouldn't be too hard not to get them mixed up here. Trash bucket. Okay, my comments have decided to just suddenly come to life. All right. It takes an extreme <laughs> amount of time to make anything out of paper clips or chain mail in general. The paper clips make it that makes the rings longer to make, but the actual weaving process, that's going to be the same regardless what material you're using. And if you're going riveted mail, it's going to be even longer. tags out too so I can label each of these. I've already got the Byzantine starter. Let me go ahead and label that real quick. Alright, we got tags. Woohoo! Really? <laughs> oh, really? Come on, classic. 
Here. Now, where did my pen go? See if I can get this through here. There we go. Uh, we're just doing some starter pieces, various uh, various weaves. I had the pen earlier. And I used what I call size two rings. Okay. All right, the hand is traditional four and one European. The reason I say European is because we're about to make Japanese four and one, which is completely different. Uh, it depends what material you're using, but it's not a very expensive hobby at all. You're going to need two pairs of pliers, metal rod. Now, the metal rods come in all shapes and sizes. The glove rings are made from this little nail right here. I just made some new rings for the, what we're about to do out of this, which is a curtain rod pin. And the last tool you'll need is a pair of good cutters. These are carpenter's pincers. I did miss your bracelet video. If you mentioned me in it... I might not have gotten the mentions. My mentions still seem to be malfunctioning. Thanks, TikTok. All right. So, Japanese 4-in-1. You need two different size rings. We're going to go with a little medium. And little baby rings. I guess theoretically you don't have to have two different size rings, but traditionally you do. They don't cost me next to nothing since I make them out of paper clips. <laughs> but I don't sell them yet either. So your Japanese 4-in-1, which we're about to do, is, in my opinion, the easiest weave you can learn. It's a good starter weave for everybody. Grab yourself two of your larger rings, one of your smalls. Open up the small ring and put both of those on there. That's it. I make them. I make them all out of paper clips. So all you have to be able to do for this weave is make a little rope. Large, small, large. That's all we're doing. Now I got a small one. I'm going to put a medium on there. Nope, it is right here. I'm assuming that meant shirt instead of shin, but yep, it is not done yet. Okay, I'm going to put that one on there, close it up. Since this is just a little test piece, so to speak, starter piece, we're not going to go too far on this. Let's do hmm, three sets of five. But Japanese 4-in-1 is a very simple weave for anybody to learn. You can literally learn this in five minutes. Very easy to do. Okay, that'll be it for the first little rope. So, all you got to be able to do is that. <laughs> one, 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 one. Very simple. It's supposed to be made with two different size rings, but you don't necessarily have to. So we're going to set, take this and we're going to set it down right here. And we're going to make an exact copy of that. 
Actually, we're going to make two exact copies of that. So we're going to need five large rings and four small. Karen, on top of the moderation tonight. All right. Karen will be answering a significant amount of questions because I don't always see the comments because I'm often staring down at my hands. Five larges there. I'm going to get four open little ones. Close that too early. And we're just alternating small, large, small, large, small, large. All right, I will show you all the ring here on this next piece. So this ring is a jump ring opener. It's got little slots in it, different sizes. You want to find the size that's closest to the metal you're using. Grab your ring, stick it in a little slot right there, and it basically serves a second set of pliers so you can keep your hands free. You can twist it to open and close. It does hurt your finger after a while, but it is a time saver. Okay, now we've got our second rope that looks exactly like the first rope. And this is where it's going to get tricky. We are in a minute because we're going to need more rings. We will show you all how to make them. You're going to take your small ring. You're going to go through this top one, and you're going to go through that one. That was sarcasm a second ago, by the way. So in reality, all we've done is double the length of the rope. But we're not doing it that way. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to hold it like that. I'm going to lay it down so that these two little ropes are side by side. I'm going to grab another one. Open. And the idea here is to match up the big rings. So that one connects to that one, this one's gonna to connect to the next one. And see, this is why we're making starter pieces because adding to a piece of chainmail you've already got is a lot simpler than getting it started. Getting the pattern going is always the hard part. So I wanna have a bunch of it just ready to roll. Now, if you've ever seen the chainmail jelly cubes, this is how those are made. I've never completed one. But that's how they're made. So now we're going to connect that one to that one. One more to go. I'm going to do one more row for this, though. Right now, it's not really Japanese 4-in-1 because I don't have a big enough piece. It will become four and one once I add one more row. 
for that, we're gonna need more rings. Need five of these little ones. I got three. So, paperclip, how to make the rings. Straighten paperclip. Thank you for the likes. Eh, it's both an outfit and show. Once you got your straightened paper clip, you're gonna find yourself a metal rod of some kind. They come in all shapes and sizes. We've got a nail here, we've got an actual mandrel, and we have a curtain rod pin, which is what we're using. Thanks for the likes, PKR. Wrap your piece of wire around the rod. It doesn't have to be paper clips. You can use whatever you like. Hmm, 800 people for a Sunday. That's not bad. Okay, and then you got yourself a little coil. Get yourself some good cutters. These are called carpenter's pincers or carpenter's pliers. Gonna cut straight across. Still magnetized. Since we only need the five, that's all we're gonna cut right this second. Patience is the number one, number one skill you need to do chain mail. Yeah, what, one weave you're not going to see me make tonight is elf weave. There is such a thing. And that is because it is a pain in the ass to do. Extremely slow, at least for me. I have not mastered that pattern yet. And it just seems like a whole lot of work for nothing. <laughs> So visually, Japanese 4-in-1 is not very impressive, but it's got its uses, and it's easy to learn, so it's a good starting one. Steve, or Steve? Steve is essentially, his wings are essentially made from 4-in-1, Japanese 4-in-1. Always craft chainmail armor. People have been crafting chainmail armor for hundreds of years. Okay, third rope done. Yes, it is possible with copper wire, steel wire, you name it. I do not recommend aluminum. I can't say that enough. Aluminum is weak and sad and pathetic and will break. <laughs> Can't go wrong with steel, which is what these are. So the ring is called a jump ring opener or jump ring closer. Grab your little jump rings here, stick it into the slot, and give it a twist. And it works like a second set of pliers, so you don't have to let go of what you're working on. Well, welcome to the Paperclip Army, user 09763475. Next step, get yourself a name. <laughs> oh, lordy. <laughs> 
I mean, if you don't get yourself a good username, how am I going to differentiate you between user All right, now that we got our third row in, let's see if I can get this on a flat surface. Try to make this obvious to you. Let's look at our middle. So Japanese 4 and 1 is called that because each ring is connected to four others. But unlike European 4 and 1, every ring is not. Only the middle rings are. So for example, this one is only connected to two. This is European 4 and 1, Japanese 4 and 1. Similar name, completely different. But let's tag it and move on to the next one. Very stiff tags. Alright, next up, let's go to one of my least favorites, <laughs> Box Chain. I'm going to stick with the little tiny baby rings just because I like them better. They're stronger. I am 37 years old, and I have a magnet stuck to my hand, apparently. Okay, we're going to stick with very simple. So get yourself some rings. In this case, you're going to start with six of them. You're going to close four, open two. I have not bothered processing these yet. does protect you from sharp weapons. I'm not going to test it on my hand, but <laughs> the other videos where I tested it on fruit seem to work, except for the pitchfork. Did not fare well against the pitchfork. Be cool if they made uh, titanium paper clips, but I don't know. I imagine a spool of titanium wire cost a fortune. Entirely depends on what the project is. More money than you've got. And to make it so that you actually would fit you, I'd have to be there in person. I'll show you what I'm doing here in just a second. All right, box chain. Probably could have done this with the bigger rings, but you're going to start with two, two, and two. And just to make this easier, we're going to grab a paper clip. 
just to mark our starting point. So nothing too complicated here. Two, connecting to two, connecting to two more. Once you got your two, this is a very important move to learn in chain mail because it is necessary in a lot of weaves. A lot. Get yourself an open ring ready. Get yourself a second ring. Open that one as well. Biggest thing would be Bob the Paperclip Dragon, but he is unfinished. So you got your open ring. You got two, two, and two. Doesn't matter if it's two, two, and two, whatever. You just need two, two. So the very important move. You're going to grab it and open those two on the end and flip them over. Just like that. They're still connected. They just flipped over. Flipped over, flipped over. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up here so that I can see those two I just flipped over right there. And I'm going to hook it and tug. And it makes a little tiny ball that's necessary for a lot of weaves. Very similar to Byzantine. We're going to take our second open ring. We're going to put it through the exact same spot. Going to add two more on there. We're going to get two of them ready, and we're going to do that same move again. Flip it over. Open and hook. Second one's going to go right where the first one went. And that is all box is. I'm not a big fan of box. I got a finished piece here somewhere. That's a boxed ring goes all the way around, but it's a little bulky for a ring. Bracelet, I think, would be fine, but ring's a bit bulky. And that's what your finished product's going to be, but we're going to make it just a little bit longer before we tag it and bag it. All chain mail is tedious. Remember that the next time you go into a jewelry store. That's a bad ring. Trash bucket. I didn't process these, so I got bad ones mixed in with good ones. Magnet. said two more balls. We don't need a whole lot for a starter piece.
One more ball, and then we will tag it and call this one. Mm. That's the one we're making right now. I did not go all the way through for that one. I tried thinning it out at the end, didn't do that. So the rest of it is the same thing. But I'm actually not a fan of this weave. I prefer this weave's big brother, Byzantine, which is my favorite, which still does little balls, but it separates them by an extra set of rings in between each ball. I like that a lot better. My belt is made out of that. Karen is a good mod. They are hard to find. And Karen just today made her first chainmail ring. Uh, I can usually do a ring in about a half hour. We've only been here about 10 minutes and I got this. And that's if I'm not doing it on the live. Obviously, live slows it down a little bit. Okay, good on that one. Just tag it. The one that's a little bit bulky for the ring is this one. This is box weave. One of the reasons I don't like it, but it would work for a bracelet. Oh, it's going to be tight. I'm going to need to put a medium ring on here just to be able to tag it. Plenty of four and one. I do not need a starter on four and one. Oh, let's see what else I'm in the mood for. Oh, stepping stones. That's always a good one. We'll do stepping stones. People like stepping stones. My big ring. Just got these lovely nails today. <laughs> I think they're going to make for a nice little mandrel, so we're going to give them a shot. A little bit bulky, but that's okay. You need bulky for this next one. Step one, we're going to get ourselves, let me see if I remember this right, fourteen of these, give or take, it's going to change depending on how big this ring turns out to be. We'll start small. I'm going to start this one similar to how you did Byzantine with the 2-2-2 two, two, two combo. I'm sorry, similar to how we did the box with the 2-2-2 two, two, two combo. Oops. I do make a lot of chain mail. And other sculptures.
So this one does not work for rings. It does work for typically bracelets or necklaces. It's about the only use I've found out of this one. Purely decorative. So all we're doing first is making a two by two by two chain. Very simple starting. It looks a lot complicated, more complicated than it really is. I do not have any completed in front of me at the moment to show y'all, so we're going to have to complete some. That's all there is to it. One more segment. So this works better if you have a secondary material for your other rings, but I don't have any handy, so we're going to use regular old paper clips again, but with a much bigger mandrel. Have not tested this one yet. Should be fine. So step one, straighten paper clip. Wrap the paper clip around my nail. Try to keep it as tightly wound as you can. It'll help you get much more accurate rings. Looks like this nail is not that much bigger than my other mandrel. Should still be able to get four rings or so out of this. Big honking rings compared to the little ones. That is what you want. I, last time I did this was actually a much, much, much bigger. If these don't work, I will have to go much, much, much bigger. And I think we're going to do two of these since they're not very thick. As I've said before, the smaller the ring, the stronger they are. So these big rings are going to be weaker. I'm going to grab two of them. I'm just going to slap them together. Just like that. And take a little ring. Connect that little ring through both of those. And one of these loops. Oops. I'm going to go through the ring, big rings again and connect it to the next loop. Very awkward to hold this. There we go. And you guessed it, another ring through the third piece. See, I think my big rings are going to be a little bit not big enough. <laughs> but that's okay. We're going to test it out anyway. So you're going to set that one aside. And we're going to do it again. Kind of need some more rings of both sides for this. Should stiffen up a little bit when I add the second set.
More big rings. Gonna need more little ones too. We're sticking with our nails. Where did my nail go? My little nail, not the big nail. There it is. Baby nail. Alrighty. So we're gonna make the exact same thing. So we need two, four, two, four, six, eight, ten, thirteen total. Might need a little bit more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, and of course that's a bad one. We are gonna need one more paper clip. We're, <clears throat> we're doing a bunch of starter pieces of various designs for future use. So little pieces, many different types. Currently, we are on stepping stones, what this one's called. Baby nail again. Making more than I need just because I'm going to need it again in a second. Okay. Let's connect these up.
refresh my comment window here. Uh, the belt took probably 50, 60 hours. Belt was not an easy project. Well, it's easy, just very time consuming. <laughs> These magnetized tools are really uh, starting to annoy me. I left my powerful magnet sitting on them. Was not thinking about it. Guess my belt's gonna be magnetized. All right. Now we're going to do just like we did the first time. We're going to connect it to our two rings. Making chain mail out of paper clips. Okay, so now we got two of these little things. We're gonna spin them so that they are opposite directions of one another. So that we have the pattern on this side and we have the pattern on that side. These comments just really keep on uh, lagging on me. I'm missing half of them. So, what we're going to do is open a ring. We're going to connect these two big ones to those small ones. And then we're going to do the same thing with those small ones and those big ones. And we're going to double ring that connection just so it stays consistent. Now it's starting to take shape. Yeah, my comments keep stopping, stopping too. I keep refreshing. Really, that's all I need for stepping stones. We would just keep going, so you'd add another one going the other way again and keep flipping it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So let's tag it and move on. Oh, actually, let's not move on. <laughs> I did not realize it's about to be midnight. i got to be up for work in six hours. So I'm going to tag this one and call it. OK, 
Careful, that Karen is my uh, moderator. So, we did four different patterns. We got the box weave. We got the Japanese 4-in-1, which always looks like a bit of a mess to me. It is what it is. We got stepping stones. Useful for bracelets and necklaces, that's about it. And my favorite, Byzantine, which is also what my belt is made out of. I'm going to go bed. I'll catch you all tomorrow. Don't know what time, though.